This is the 3DC Knee Pads final practice presentation. My name is Matt Archer. I'm here with Chris Kirkpatrick and Dylan McCulloch. A little introduction. The Knee Pad project was presented by 3DC. The 3DC stands for the Center of Device Design and Development and is originated out of UW Fox Valley. The mission of this company is to help inventors with new ideas with engineering, testing, technical work, and finally to help with the marketing of the prototype. 3DC is run by John Fick, the product development engineer, Dr. Rainey McClanahan, who's a co-director, along with Dr. Michael Zampoloni, who is also a co-director, along with multiple different interns each year. Our ultimate project goal is to design and prototype knee pads that provide superior comfort along with spring assistant standing during tiling, construction, or other similar work. So the mandatory design requirements that we wanted to incorporate with our prototype is an ankle support to reduce ankle bend and strain, uh, spring assist lifting capabilities to assist the user in both standing and kneeling and transitioning between those two positions, some comfortable leg straps, a slim design, all day comfort. We wanted the user to be able to wear these all day long during breaks, maybe during a lunch period, something they didn't have to take on and off throughout their entire workday. We also wanted to increase the marketability, which in the initial stages of this project was a somewhat vague concept and idea, but eventually got narrowed down as we progress with our prototype. So the optional design parameters that we wanted to incorporate is an interchangeable or adjustable sizes for custom fit. A lot of people are a lot of different sizes, and we wanted to match the largest demographic we could reach with our prototype to increase the marketability. A unique style and accessories that clip on or that are built in pencil holder tape measure holder pretty much any accessory that someone could use during their line of work or whatever you they're using this product for also wanted different add-on tools that different people and occupations could use as well as a seated or kneeling rest feature so that that when they're in the kneeling position doing their work that it's somewhat of a release on their back and stress and core so they don't have to constantly be adjusting themselves. Here's our project schedule. We pretty much followed this schedule right on since week one. This particular schedule bumped up our prototype build to earlier around week five or six to enable us to encounter problems sooner. As weird as that may sound, it actually was very beneficial. We encountered a lot of problems with our spring assist, as well as multiple other aspects of the prototype, which we'll talk about later in the presentation. But that key component of our schedule was very advantageous to the end prototype. Here's some of our initial possible solutions that we conceptually drew to narrow down our design ideas. This is the leg brace concept. As the name implies, it pretty much is a leg brace with steel bar stock along with some buckle straps, some elastic. It's pretty similar to a medical leg brace except it incorporates a knee pad, uh, an ankle support, and also the spring assist design. We also had a seat concept which incorporated pretty much of the same components of the leg brace design but dialed in more on the seat concept and what we could do to utilize a resting seated position. Another possible solution was our solid piece concept. This would be 3D printed or molded out of pretty much a two piece concept, an upper and a lower, that incorporated the ankle support. Uh, less components typically would mean less cost, less assembly, less fabrication involved. So we we're trying to drum up some sort of creativity with the team on what we could do to initially look at cost effectiveness in our initial design rather than trying to perform cost savings initiatives later on during the prototype build when the design has already been set. Another possible solution was a pants concept. It's basically the leg brace concept inside of a pair of pants. Uh, potentially had more comfort, more mobility but there were sizing issues it really decreased our marketability and would have to obviously come in a variety of different sizes based on height weight and everything in between so this mainly was a result of looking for creativity and thinking outside the box which 
eventually we knew most likely wouldn't be feasible. So here's our decision matrix. Uh, all of our main categories that we were looking to improve on in our concept. The Obviously, the leg brace was the highest ranking in the decision matrix, as expected. But the solid piece was a close-ish second. But for reasons seen here in the decision matrix was eventually ruled out. So that led us to our proposed solution. So after the results of the decision matrix, we came with the leg brace concept as our final solution that we can incorporate as a basic design and apply different tweaks and adjustments to satisfy all the concerns from 3DC and also incorporate some of the optional parameters that we wanted to include with our working prototype. So our working prototype overview. This uh, began as a purchased steel framed hinge knee brace uh, due to our initial prototype issues. Again, that will be discussed later on. But this prototype included adjustable ankle supports that could be adjusted up and down based on the user's height. It's comfortable enough to be worn all day, as proven. It has an integrated knee pad into the knee brace design and ankle support straps, which helps with the all-day comfort, not so much as you're kneeling, but as you're walking around, it keeps the ankle support closer to your shin, which allows it to be more comfortable when you're walking around. Some of the prototype obstacles that we faced, no seated rest feature was built into the prototype. Uh, there's no spring assist capabilities. Uh, the main goal was set at 30 to 40 pounds of lift assistance with our spring assist capabilities. And our calculations have shown that the spring assistance with both our linear and torsional spring designs were not quite feasible. For the spring calculations, the torsional setup is can be seen here and modeled. Uh, the alpha angle is the angle between the shin and the thigh. And A, the value A is basically halfway up the thigh and W is the weight of the upper body. And for this, for the calculations, we tried to make uh, it, the models as simple as possible um, with many assumptions, those including but not limited to um, all the beams are rigid and they rotate about that, that point, capital A on the bottom right. Um, we assume no friction. W is, uh, is the weight of the upper body only. The beams, joints, and springs are considered massless, and also the thigh of the of the user is also considered massless, for reasons being that uh, the thigh is going to be supported in multiple areas, including the knee. It's going to be supported between the calf and the thigh, and also um, some of the ankle. So figuring out how the thigh plays into the upper body weight was just too complicated for this model. Um, the force FW as seen in the two middle free body diagrams is the force of the weight that acts perpendicular to the upper beam. And that force creates a moment about the, the point A. Uh, tau required, that's the, the value that we're interested in, and that equals our angle theta times our spring constant K, which can be which is derived from the equation on the middle right side of the screen. The second model that we considered was for an extension or compression spring. The spring would be attached to the shin and then attached to, which is also attached to a rope that wraps around a pulley that is at the pivot point area around radius R and then extends up the thigh and is attached to where we consider the weight of the upper body halfway up the thigh. The same assumptions are made here. Um, rigid beams, no friction, W is the upper body weight, etc. Uh, w is the force weight of the upper body only. The value that we're interested here for F spring is the K value of the spring times X and X is the extension of the spring extension or compression. The average American is uh, considered to weigh about 178 pounds. 
Uh, their height of a male at 30, at the age of 30, is 5 foot 10, and a female at the same age is about 5 foot 5, and then the average overall height is 5 foot 7. These values were used in the calculations, uh, breaking the body into sections to find the total weight of the upper body. Um, can be seen in these charts. Um, and the thigh length is considered to be 25% of the total body height. Um, so you multiply that by our average American height and then cut that in half where we consider um, all the weight acting on the models. You end up with a value of about 8.09 inches up from the knee. Uh, the total upper body percentage weight is uh, about 59% of the total body weight. And the values that were used in our calculations are for, um, the, you have the average American, and then you have the average minus 50 pounds, the average plus 50 pounds, and the average plus 100 pounds. And those values for W are found in the chart on the lower right. You have uh, values of seven, about 76 pounds, about 105 pounds, 135 pounds, and 164 pounds. Again, those weights are what were used in our calculations. Here are the results of the torsion spring model. Um, these springs are supposed to assist, so the results for the springs are at uh, 25, 50, and 75 percent spring assist. At just 25% spring assists with knee angles between 30 and 45 degrees, we're looking at a total spring torque required between about 108 to 289 inch pounds. If you divide that into four springs or two springs per leg, you're looking at about 27 to 72 inch pounds per spring. Now, the largest off the shelf spring that torsion spring that we could find was. 44 inch pounds and that spring was bulky and not really not really marketably feasible and at 44 pounds that's only going to be serving a 25 percent spring assist which might be a little more for a 128 pound person but is going to be negligible for somebody that weighs 278 pounds for the extension spring or compression spring model um, we used a radius of about 1.1 inches. This resulted in a, an extension or compression of about 3 inches, which fits some of the uh, springs that are available on the market. At just 25% spring assist at a knee angle between 30 and 45 degrees, you're looking at between 1,000 and 2,500 pounds of spring force required. Divide that into four springs. Two per leg, you're looking at uh, 177 to 472 pounds per spring. For extension springs, none exist on the, as far as off the counter, over the counter, um, easy to find springs. They will either extend too much, which reduces their spring power, or, or they don't, they're, they will overextend and you'll end up damaging the spring. For compression springs there's a limited selection and they're all going to be bulky between two and four inches outer diameter. There's also um, spring um, gas powered springs available on the market and these are also going to be bulky. They're going to be heavy and made of steel. Hi this is Dylan McCulloch. Uh, prototype spring assist Despite uh, Chris's calculations and showing that it was not really feasible, uh, we had already purchased all the components and so we decided to still build it that we could prove what Chris um, calculated. Uh, for this first prototype, we used the largest commercial available torsional springs and on all three of us, we didn't feel any noticeable assistance. Uh, with Chris's calculations also, it, it is a theoretical, perfect case scenario. So, and with our design here, as you can see, uh, it was not rigid at all and it moved around a, a lot on our legs. Um, we also tested the linear springs, but they didn't do much better. Spring Loaded Technologies is a company that has the system working. Um, they have the, the design or the, the spring assist that we need 
but they already have somewhere around four patents on it, cost over $3,000, and they're using a liquid spring that is extremely complex. Uh, the picture on the left shows, I guess, uh, actually it's from the patent, and then over on the right is a design. Ideally, we would have got our, whole, our hands on that and applied it to our system, but just $3,000, it's ridiculous. Uh, seated rest hurdles. Uh, this was a part of our wants. It wasn't a need. We started with the idea of just doing a catcher. Just a little block there, like in the middle picture, to go on there. But with the body pushing down on that onto your shin, and then the force going up from the ankle block, it was extremely uncomfortable. We never exactly modeled one up like we wanted or we would have designed but we played around with and realized it wasn't comfortable by putting a force up and down on the shin only within six inches of each other. Uh, a hinge locking support would be the way to go, uh, like the left and the right picture. Uh, you would be able to lock it in at a specific angle that you could only go back to so that it's, it locks you in. It's kind of like a seat when you are in the kneeling position. The ankle support. Uh, we started with wood just because it's everywhere we had in the shop, easy to work with, and cut it with any tool. Um, after we kind of got a general design or idea of it, we then 3D printed. Uh, we used the MakerBot here at Rock County. It was a disaster. Um, the the MakerBot turned an eight, nine hour job into about a three day job by jamming up and it just wasn't good. Uh, but with the wood design, we were able to, I guess, test multiple sizes and shapes. Uh, we did sizes by moving the block in and out and around on the leg to see what was comfortable, where it fit best, and then the shapes. Uh, we came up with a larger shape uh, that, I guess, it distributes the load um, onto a larger area on your leg. Uh, after we realized that one size isn't comfortable for all because we all three tried it. We realized that we needed to do an adjustable leg. Uh, the picture on the far right shows the adjustable two pieces. Um, you can adjust it up and down and it'll fit a shorter guy, a larger guy, and each person's going to have a comfort because each body type's different. The, the leg length, the foot, everything is different. So it worked very well with that design. Component cost analysis, some of the things that really stick out is the L bracket, the slotted bar. Um, both of those we quoted at a couple different machine shops. To, um, one person had, or one person was going to laser cut it for us. The other one was just going to machine it. Um, just really expensive, and that's where our, I guess our prototype cost came from. Another big one was the ankle block by having it 3D printed. You had to have it 3D printed with a technology that isn't too um, porous in the inside that we could at least kind of drill and tap or drill into it that we could attach it. Uh, the MakerBot, once again, did not work very well. Uh, and then the Mueller knee brace, $25 for that. We used it as a comfortable um, starting point and it had the steel frame that we needed. Uh, when we actually designed this and put it into production, we expect about a 60% reduction in cost uh, due to buying everything in bulk, uh, probably having the L bracket and the slotted bars uh, molded because they're not, they don't have that much force on them. Uh, we could just do a nice rigid plastic and then designing a Mueller knee brace instead of um, buying a manufactured part. Conclusion, uh, due to prolonged focus on the spring assist design, and it's and not panning out, other concepts were less refined due to time. Uh, we kind of dove right in and we expected our first design to work. Um, we had these huge springs and it just, I mean, it didn't work out and we, it gave us a little time to, I mean, we had to scramble. Uh, but we did end up getting a working prototype. Um, all these pictures here, the far left is the prototype that we have built. The next picture over is the, I call it the lower unit of this. Uh, that part right there gets just attached to the 
manufactured Mueller knee brace. The next one over is with a more complex, that's, I mean, a, an ideal knee brace or knee brace that we would like to go with. It, uh, it'd have more structure and be a little more comfortable. And over on the right is just another picture of our final product. Uh, while doing this, I mean, we came up with a working prototype. And the only thing that we didn't get on this project was the spring assist. It has the reduced ankle bend. Um, it's comfortable. Chris has been wearing it for the last four hours. It's slim. I mean, there's, we're not going to have any issues of it hitting or running into stuff. All day comfort. Once again, Chris is wearing it. Uh, it's unique design. I mean, I haven't seen any that have an adjustable ankle support like that. Accessories, uh, you can clip on a tape measure, uh, a pencil, a few different items, and it's adjustable. Uh, it fits a uh, large demographic, like Matt said earlier. Acknowledgements. The team would like to thank John Fick and Professor Zampaloni for the help during the semester while designing the knee pad. The team would also like to thank Steve Wills and Jeff Putzer for bringing this project to 3DC for our team to work on. It was a fun project. It was very frustrating, but overall, we learned a lot from it. Any questions? Thank you very much for your guys' time.